Hi everybody. Today we're going to be looking at some really cool things you can do with Zoom's whiteboard tool. They have added some functionality to it, um, including some templates you can start using in a whiteboard, as well as some cool things you can do in breakout rooms with whiteboards, and then they can come back together and share those. So I am inside of Zoom right now. I am going to actually turn off my video so that I can focus uh, us on the whiteboard features. The one thing I want to make sure I say before I jump into the specifics is make sure you are on the latest version of the Zoom client. You can double check that by clicking inside the Zoom client itself in the upper right hand corner where your picture or icon or initials are. You can click on that and choose to check for updates. So this is just recently released in the end of January of 2023. So make sure you're on the newest version so you can see all of these cool features. So I am going to stop my video and show you some of the great things you can do with the Zoom whiteboard. Okay, so within Zoom, of course you start your Zoom just like you always do. But one of the things that we will see down here are whiteboards. And when we click on this, we will see this load. We're going to see here um, a few that I've already pulled up before. I can choose those. You can see I was doing a little testing. Um, you've got some other options over here. Recent, some things that, again, I've already worked on. Um, my whiteboards, anything that um, I specifically started, some that were shared to me, any that I start. But you also see this cool thing over here called templates, where you can start with a template on the whiteboard to give your class a jumping off point for whatever it is you're talking about. And um, you can see some of the options here and you can search um, a lot of different things that will allow you to, again, give yourself a jumping off point. If we pulled in one of these, let's say we choose this one. Um, it's going to ask us if we want to use this one, gives you a little more information about it. We'll go ahead and use it. It's doing this for us. And then we have a couple of options here, and these are important. The first one is, do you want all of your users to be granted edit access? You want them to actually type and click and do all the things while you're all working together? Or do you want them to just view it and you are going to update that? So maybe you're working as a class and you just want a brainstorming session, but you want to be in control over what's being typed or what's being added, you choose the presenting. But if you genuinely want them to actually click and add their components as well, you want that first one. This is kind of neat. Do you want users to have access to the board after the meeting? So you can choose that yes or no. I'll go ahead and leave a collaborating on here. All right, so this came in and you can see that this is the template where we're starting from here. Um, you can see over here on the left all of the different options that we can add to this whiteboard. Now we could have started with a blank one, so we would have had nothing. We did start with this, which is completely fine, um, but you can still add anything you want to this. Here's a drawing, which is literally what it sounds like. Highlighter and pen, how thick do you want it to be? So then I can start drawing. We've got some shape options here um, that will allow you to add any equations or uh, different shapes or flowchart type of shapes. So I can drag and allow that in there. When we do that, you can see we can um, add some text. We can add another shape. We can fill it with a color if we wanted to. Um, and we can also change the outline of it if we wanted to. A few other options in here as well where you want to send it to the back or bring it to the front, meaning it's layered with another image. We can duplicate it, delete it, copy paste it, and so on. Okay, so shapes. Lines, uh, double arrow or single arrow. Let's say we do want a line. Uh, got some options here as well. We can label it with uh, a text on the line, which is pretty neat. Um, the color of it, the uh, kind of connector that we want. We can thickness and again, some of those options we already saw um, with our shape. Okay. We can also just add in text. This might be helpful for this area. So let's say I want to add in text here and I want to say um, topic one, whoops, and so on. That's how we can add components to our template that's already here. We can also change this text here if I wanted to. And we can change some things with the 
sticky note, which is also an option over here, but they came with this template. We can change the color. We can actually add a little emoji to it. So you might want students to say, what do you think about this? They can actually add an emoji that says thumbs up. I like that one. You can see that number right there. A um, few other options again that we saw in the past. Okay, again, you could add another sticky note if you wanted to. We could add it maybe up here if we wanted to add some additional components. Um, we have a few more templates. So if we wanted to add in another template and we could add in another page to this whiteboard if we wanted to, here's those same templates we saw before. Um, so we could add in another one if we wanted to. Two truths and a lie. That's a really popular one for uh, classes for um, icebreakers. Okay, this is pretty neat too. We can add uh, in PDFs and images. So let me go ahead and search for a second and find one to show you. Okay, so if I click on this, you can see that I've got some images here. Um, here's a something I was working on that is a kind of a save the date. So here's an image. <clears throat> and PDFs come in the same way. Let me show you an example of how you might use something like that. Let me find a PDF for you. Okay, you can bring in a PDF. This is from a website that I found that allows you to download free worksheets. You can bring in a PDF and actually have the students work with you on filling in the, in this play, in this case, blanks. So if you brought this in and you were all working together, or you could say, you know, so-and-so take number three or so-and-so take number seven. If you wanted to add content to this, like let's say number three here, you would add a text box and you would come over and you would type what you think the right answer is, and then you can move it so it's a little more centered and so on. So this is an easy way to bring in images or PDFs to a whiteboard and allow students to continue to work on it. The next one down here are just some more tools, some things that you can do. There's a cool uh, mind map um, diagram visual organizer that you can add to it. This is kind of neat actually. If we click this and we add this to it, let's say we add our text, Okay, you can add um, circles or additional components to one side or the other. So let's say I add it here and it draws the line for me and I can add more text. And let's say I'm over here and I add this and it'll draw more text this way. So you're kind of creating a mind map as you go, which is pretty cool. As you can see, you can um, change the color and again, some of those options we saw before. Let me go ahead and choose to delete. Okay, so you get how that works. Um, you have an eraser, of course, and an undo button. So those are the components that you can see inside of your whiteboard, which is pretty neat. Um, up here in the upper right-hand corner, you can choose to share this if you want to um, and give some rights to whoever you want to give it to. Um, you can copy the link and they will be able to access that. I do believe they need to be logged on to Zoom, though, in order to view it. These same options are available inside of a breakout room. I believe though, the instructor has to join themselves to the breakout room and launch the whiteboard. I don't believe the participants will actually see the whiteboard component at the bottom. Um, I could be incorrect about that, but I know that you can launch them for sure inside of breakout rooms. And then what they could do is they could work on their breakout rooms. You can actually download these whiteboards as a PDF, and then the students could come back to this main area and upload their PDF to show what they did in their small group breakout room. So a lot of options here, a lot of templates, a lot of flexibility in how you use these whiteboards inside of Zoom. Okay, before I wrap this video up, I did wanna show you, I created a breakout room. It's hard to tell that I'm in a breakout room except it says leave room. And you can once again create a whiteboard here um, know that your whiteboards are always saved inside of your account. So this is the one we were just playing around with in the main board, and you can bring these up at any time. So I'll go ahead and say new whiteboard this time. And here's my breakout room whiteboard that I can then do everything I want to do that I was doing before, but now I'm in a breakout room. I wanted to show you that inside those breakout rooms, as I mentioned before, you can actually export these as a PDF. So as students are in these breakout rooms and they work together, they can export this as a PDF, 
hold on to it onto their hard drive or wherever they want to save it. And then when they come back to the main room, they could then ex import that back into the main area. So let me just, let me just add some text here. Okay. If I go ahead and export this as a PDF, I'll go ahead and export. This, I want you to see that this will show you where it's being stored. It's actually saved inside of my Zoom area, which makes sense. So it dates it, time and date stamps it, and here is the PDF that I created from this session. So if I go ahead and leave my breakout room and go back to the main area, I wanna show you that I can upload this. So here I am back in my main session, and I am going to go ahead back to my whiteboard area. I'm gonna bring back my whiteboard. This is what we were playing around with. And I wanna show you that if I click on my upload, I can go back to my Zoom area and upload the area, the PDF we were working on in the breakout room. So let me go ahead and do that now. All right, here I am back in this same Zoom meeting I found before. Here's my PDF and if I open it, It'll take a second to bring in, and here's my really in-depth brainstorming session PDF that I saved for my breakout room. So this could be really powerful in that you could um, have students work and bring back their ideas and share them. One thing that's also worth mentioning is you can change, if you're getting a little crowded here on the screen, you can zoom out, of course, and zoom in, and you also have this option that says um, fit to screen so that you can kind of fit everything on one screen, so know that that's here too. One last thing I wanted to mention, I told you you could have multiple pages on side, uh, inside of a whiteboard. If you click on this little icon down here at the bottom, you can see I've got page one. I can also create a page two so that we can keep going and keep um, growing whatever we are working on on our whiteboard here. So there are a lot of options that you can do with this Zoom breakout or rather Zoom whiteboard both in a main session and in a breakout area so that you can keep students engaged during your Zoom session. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm also going to um, include in Zoom's page for getting started using whiteboards, their user guide, um, in the description in this video area so that you can access that as well. So good luck with that. I hope you find this to be super engaging and really helpful in moving your class forward in a Zoom session with your students collaborating with you and with each other.